Hey, welcome back Cloud Scholars. I'm your host, Kieran Tross. In today's video, I'm gonna explain Azure Storage Accounts, the type of data it can host for you, plus I'll dive into some of its capabilities and configurations. We will stay at a 10,000 foot view for this video. Storage accounts have many features to which, to be honest, need their own video for specific functions. So, what is an Azure Storage Account? As always, I like to go to Microsoft's definition. An Azure Storage Account contains all of your Azure Storage data objects, including blobs, file shares, queues, tables, and disk. The Storage Account provides a unique namespace for your Azure Storage data that's accessible from anywhere in the world over HTTP or HTTPS. Data in your Storage Account is durable and highly available, secure, and massively scalable. So, what does that mean? So, one of the first things I want to do is actually break down this definition. Starting off from that second line where it says data objects including blobs, file shares, and queues. What exactly are they? What's a blob? Blob storage is optimized for storing massive amounts of unstructured data. Unstructured data is data that can, doesn't adhere to a particular data model or definition, such as text or binary. So Azure blobs are mainly used for granting images to a browser, storing files for distributed access, streaming video and audio. You can also use it to restore data services, plus for data storage and analysts by another Azure storage. So log analytics or something similar to that. Objects in blob storage can be accessed from anywhere in the world via HTTP or HTTPS. So blobs, think of blobs as a massive repository for you to drop all types of different data attributes, right? So that's, you know, you've got uh, text, you've got uh, JPEG, you've got movie files, all that stuff. So think of a blob from a physical standpoint is like, hey, you tell your child, clean up the room and they put everything under the bed. They've got their hats, they've got clothes, they've got food, all types of stuff under the bed. And the bed, bed under the bed becomes essentially a blob. So what's blob architecture? Storage accounts names. This needs to be unique. No storage account can have the same name. Containers. A container organizes a set of blobs similar to a file system. A storage account can include an unlimited number of containers and a container can store an unlimited number of blobs. But then there are blobs. And then when it comes to blobs, there are different type of blobs. So what are the blob types? There's block. Block blobs store text and binary data up to 4.7 terabytes. Block blobs are made up of blocks of data that can be managed individually. Then there are pen. A pen blobs are made up of block blo blocks like block blobs, but are optimized for append operations. A pen blobs are ideal for scenarios such as login data for, from a virtual machine. Then there are page. Page blobs are store random access files up to eight terabytes in size. Page blobs store virtual hard drives files and serve as disk for Azure virtual machines. So the next one was file shares in that definition. So let's talk a little bit about file shares. We can use storage accounts to manage file shares for our organization. File shares are fully managed in the cloud and are accessible via SMB and NFS protocols. So what can you do with these file shares? They're serverless file shares. They're built for hybrid using file sync. You can tear your data for a different level of performance. And then there's multiple protocol support. So remember the beginning when I said each uh, function within uh, the storage account, you know, you can kind of pick off a different video for it. That third item there, you can tear your data for different level of performance. Let's talk about lifecycle management. It's talking about access uh, rights, right? So that's uh, not necessarily access rights, but access tears. So it's hot, cool, or archive. So with those access tiers, you can do lifecycle management, but then also not only just that, you can also make sure that you're saving cost with the data in your blog. But that's a whole different discussion, but I kind of wanted to give you a little bit of teaser there. So now queues. Azure Queue Storage is a service for storing large number of messages. You can access messages from anywhere in the world via authenticated calls using HTTP or HTTPS. What are the components that make up a queue? The URL format. 
HTTPS, which I'm hoping, even though Azure storage accounts can do HTTP, I'm hoping you would go to HTTPS. And then as always, remember these storage accounts have to have a unique name, right? So that storage account, right? That information right there. So HTTPS, double colon, backslash, backslash, and says storage account. That is the name of the storage account. So if my name of my storage account is uh, storage account Kieran, you cannot have a name of a storage account called storage account Kieran because then where would it go? So it goes to storage account name, then it goes dot q dot core dot windows dot net, and then the q name, right? And then following it has a storage account, the q, and the message. So remember, we go back to this slide. It has a storage account and the q, and things of that nature. So the next one is Azure Storage Tables, right? So we're here we are talking about Azure Table Storage, excuse me, stores large amounts of structured data. The service is a NoSQL data store, which accepts authenticated calls from inside and outside the Azure cloud. Azure tables are ideal for storing structured non-relational data. So you'd have, as always, start off with a storage account name, then you'd have the table, Right, and that table is for the one that we're seeing here. It says customers, and there's another one for wine photos. And then within customers, you have the other attributes that you want associated with it: name, email, location, so on and so forth. That's really how tables go. So some of the common use uses of table storage include storing terabytes of structured data, capable of serving web scale applications. Storing data sets that don't require complex joins, foreign keys, or stored procedures and can be denormalized for fast access. And then quickly querying data using a clustered index. So let's talk about the benefits of storage accounts. So durable and highly available. What does that mean? Meaning there's redundancy within these storage accounts that ensures your data is safe in the event of a hardware failure. You can also opt to replicate data across data centers or geographical regions for additional protection from local catastro cat catastrophic, ooh, catastrophic or natural disasters. <laughs> data replicated in this way remains highly available in the event of an unexpected outage. And then also your data is secure. All data written to an Azure storage account is encrypted by the service. Azure Storage provides you with a fine grade control over who has access to your data. So with security with your storage, you can have uh, access through Active Directory or you could do shared access signatures. Um, it's a lot of different things to go into and I will definitely make another video just talking about the security and access. And then scalable, as we mentioned before about the, you know, um, being able to, you know, have your storage accounts, you know, grow, um, and, you know, Azure handles hardware maintenance updates and critical issues for you, uh, but you can increase your storage. So let's say if you have a file share and you have it at 50 gigs and you're like, oh man, I need to up this file share storage. You can raise it to 100, 200, 300 gigs for your file shares uh, without any issues. And accessible. Um, I believe I went over that, but I'll go over it again. Uh, uh, accessible from anywhere in the world over HTTP or HTTPS. I'm hoping you'll choose HTTPS. Um, Microsoft provides client libraries for Azure Storage in a variety of languages, including .NET, Java, Node.js, Python, PHP, Ruby, and others. Azure Storage supports scripting in Azure PowerShell or Azure Cloud. And the Azure Portal and Azure Storage Explorer offer easy visual solutions for working with your data. So now that we know what a storage account is, I hope that you have a better understanding of storage accounts. Um, some stuff may make sense, some stuff may not make sense, right? But I would I would uh, definitely advise you to continue learning, right? Um, and continue looking through my videos because I'm going to talk more about the Azure storage and talk more about, you know, the different uh, features that we talked about here in terms of uh, Azure storage files, Azure store blobs, uh, tables and queues, right? We'll have videos for all of that stuff plus other fun videos just talking about, you know, how to keep your storage account secure as well, which I think that's going to be a video that a lot of people are going to want to look into because when you do become a consultant or if you already are in the IT field, um, those types of uh, uh, abilities and understanding that knowledge is going to help you grow and then make sure your environment is secure and you get to sleep well at night. 
So as always, thank you for taking the time to listen to this video. If you like this video, please smash that like and subscribe button. Here at Cloud Scholars, my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and from consultant to expert. See you next time.